All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayyid from drbean.com. Let us talk about the mouthwashes today. I want to show three studies that have shown that when a good mouthwash is used, then the chances for the coronavirus or the viral load of the SARS-CoV-2 and the other coronaviruses reduces significantly in our mouth. And that actually can help. For example, if we are doing gargles every day three times, as these studies show, we reduce the risk of high load a lot. And that can actually be very, very helpful. So let us start our discussion. I'm going to share my screen. So this is drbean.com. And here is the first study. There are three studies that I want to show you. The first study, almost, uh, although it is small, however, it is in vivo. That means it is on the human patients. On the other hand, the other two studies are in vitro. That is, they are in the lab environment where they prove that the mouthwashes can help. So I want to show the in vivo first, and then we'll go to the in vitro. So look at this study. This is from, uh, uh, from Malaysia. And the study is, the purpose of the study is to assess the ability of regular gargling to eliminate severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus in the throat and nasopharynx. So this is a four arm studies that study. That means there are four groups of people who, who were given various uh, uh, mouthwashes. So let's look at the mouthwashes. The first group was given betadine, which is a povidon iodine. The second group was given Listerine, which is um, Listerine plus essential oil oils, then hydro hydrogen peroxide, and finally, water or nothing. So these were the four groups. So let's very quickly look at the study itself from my um, little diagrams here. So here is what they did. Small in vivo study, that is the importance of this study. Four groups, one group, five patients only. They were confirmed patients. All the patients here in this group, in all the groups here, they were confirmed patients. They were given povidone iodine. This is the same iodine that is also used in hospital setting for uh, cleaning uh, the wounds or for antiseptic um, uh, tincture before the surgical procedures. And they were given 10 milliliter for 30 seconds, thrice a day for seven days. Now, mind it, they were all patients of COVID-19 confirmed patients. Then another group here, they were given essential oils. And you can actually Google essential oil gargles, and you can see many products which are essential oils. Essential oils are also used for aromatherapy as well for massage, but there are essential oils for gargling or mouthwash as well. So these were 20 milliliter, 30 second, thrice a day for seven days. So this was this the second group. Third group was simply given tap water for gargling, 100 milliliter of the water, 30 seconds, thrice a day, seven days. And the fourth group here was control. They were given nothing. So now, what was the result? Let's look at their objectives. What they wanted to see was that if a patient of SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19, is gargling daily three times, will they have earlier clearance of the virus? And by definition, they said by day six, the virus is gone. RT-PCR are negative to RT-PCR. Secondary goal was to see if the RT-PCR becomes negative fast. Then another secondary goal was the progression of the symptoms do not go towards severe. Abnormal radi radiological findings are not found and then abnormal labs are not found. So they were banking on all of those to see which one comes true. And the results are excellent. Small study, but look at the results. So this is the group one, povidon iodine, essential oils group two, tap water three, and control here. So viral clearance at day six, all five folks who were using iodine three times a day for seven days. So here, this is day six. By day six, all of them had become 100% viral virus clearing, cleared by RT-PCR. So that is excellent. 
those who were taking essential oils, four of them became uh, virus uh, free by the day six, and that was 80%. Tap water, one of them, 20%, and control, none of them, 0%. So early viral clearance with iodine within six days, virus was cleared. And again, small study, but it shows you that if they were given nothing, then the virus was not cleared. Or if they were given water, then the virus was not cleared. It is only when they gave iodine or essential oils, then the virus was cleared. Then negative PCR at day 12. All five who were getting iodine, they were negative by day 12. Four who were taking essential oils, they were negative by day 12, 80%. Two who were doing water only gargles, 40%. And these are all gargles. So they said that we gave them the, uh, the substance and then we asked them to tilt their head backwards and gargle for 30 seconds. And control by the day 12, one person had become uh, RT-PCR negative. So that is very, very interesting. Then more severe disease, none of them. And that just simply means that the patients probably were younger and they have given all that demographic data in there. They were probably younger. They were probably not severe, moving towards severity. They were early phase patients, which tells us as soon as you develop symptoms, ideally as a prophylaxis, we should continue to do gargles three times daily. But even when you develop symptoms, it is important to start doing gargles. And uh, I want to say one thing. In my culture, India, Pakistan, we have a couple of things. Just like we use a lot of steam, we also use, do a lot of salt water gargles. And when I did a discussion about the steam, that steam will not kill coronavirus or SARS-CoV-2, you can actually go check that the comments under that video. And there were tons of comments cursing me and yelling at me and saying, you are not even a doctor who doesn't know the importance of steam. It is important. Steam is a great mucolytic. It would soothe. It would help. But it will not kill the virus. That is what I was talking about. And I have a personal experience with that, that one of my friends, his brother, kept taking steam and hot water, ended up he was 46 years of age, ended up in ICU in New York and passed away a couple of weeks ago. And that he was taking steam. He thought that he's doing all the right things. So when I said steam would not kill the virus, that is what I meant. It will not kill the virus. Similarly here, I know that there are going to be lots of comments that you did not talk about the, the salt water gargles and that works a lot. And I'll show you a study where the salt water did not really help. So important takeaway over here is to open up your mind. And if the salt water doesn't work, then it doesn't work. Look at the things that work and use them. So uh, iodine works, essential oils work. The best are iodine. And you would see in the next study is that H2O2 or hydrogen peroxide also works too. Listerine is very good. So one should use Listerine. Abnormal radiology. At day 14, none of them developed abnormal radiology. Abnormal labs at day 14, none of them. Now, there is a good thing in it. And that good thing is that they were all surviving. They all survived. That means monitoring the progress in them was actually useful, valuable to see how fast the virus was removed while they all were relatively healthy. And so iodine won in this situation. So that is the first study in vivo, small study, small groups, but very important outcome. So here is that study. Once again, if you go to the tab with the study results in here, they have talked about, they have talked about these, the patients, they've talked about their demography, for example, their age and their, um, uh, you know, sex and gen uh, those things. And down here are the results. So I just presented you those results that are here in a tabular way. So this is one study. The link is in the description. Next study is this one. This study is from Germany. And now this is in vitro study. That means it is in the lab. So the study is 
viricidal if efficacy of different oral rinses against severe acute respiratory syndrome virus, so SARS-CoV-2. So this study is in vitro in the lab on SARS-CoV-2. So how did they work on this study? Let me demonstrate that with my illustrations, and then we'll come back here and look at their tables. So here is what they did. Just a quick um, review of their method for what they did. So they, what they did was they took a number of cells, 50,000 cells, put them in a medium and grew them, incubated them for a day. So these cells are sitting here. They're all kind of happy. Hey, we got food. So now that they, they are nourished, then the second day, they added to those cells in that culture, they added amphotericin B, which is an antibiotic. The point of ant adding antibiotics or antibacterials is to kill any bacteria that might infect these cells. Because we want a virus to infect them, we do not want a bacteria to infect them. So they put a antibacterial to keep the culture clean. Then what they did was they added SARS-CoV-2 to them. And how did they add them? They took the nasal swab from a confirmed patient and then they take the virus from that swab and they added that virus to this uh, cell culture then they incubated those cells for a few days so what are they really trying to do they are trying to actually add virus and then grow virus in these cells and so as the virus increases remember there would be some copies a small number of copies in the nasopharyngeal swab but they want a lot of virus. So now they have taken the swab, they put them in, in a cell culture which is nourished already, and now the virus is going to infect these cells. Then it is going to grow and divide in those cells, not divide, increase in number. Then what they would do is, so now the cells would die. There would be cytopathic effect. That is, there would be pathology of the cells because they are infected. So if you see here, they're now dead cells. But the virus is now replicated and has come out of them. So they would take that virus, the supernatant from this culture will be picked up. And now that has a lot of virus. Then they would put them in another fresh culture and repeat the process. So this way they would keep amplifying the number of viruses, eventually to reach a point where they think that we have enough concentration of virus that we can now test other cells with this virus. So once they had enough virus, then what they would do is they would take one more set of fresh cells. They will add the virus to them. They would also add some organic compound to simulate the oral and nasal cavities uh, environment. So the compound can be mucine or other substances that are normally present in our buccal cavity and nasal cavity. So this would provide that hindrance or blockade to access the virus. So, and then they would add whatever they are testing, the oral rinse, they would add that as well. So one part virus, one part organic compound or load to simulate the mouth or nasal cavity, and then eight parts virus, oh, sorry, the rinsing material. They would leave it up for 30 seconds and then very quickly wash away so that they can then inspect the cells to see if they got infected or not. So here are the results. And again, they're from Germany. The results are, there were various uh, 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 mouth washes available, for example, Cavex and Chlorhexamide Fort, Dequinil, Isoberidine, and Listerine Cool Mint. They significantly reduced the viral load. Others did not. So let me very quickly now show you how they saw that. So if you see here, this is, for example, sorry. This is, for example, product A. Or let's go here. This is product A. Product A was, I believe, uh, what was the product A? Cavex. So here, if you see, they had various strains of virus from those cultures that I showed you. 
and now they have put the product. So without the product, this is the growth of the virus, the gray bar. And then with the product, the rinse, the growth is lesser, but still it is there. So now if you look at all of them, you can actually see that this one, the product C, has a very low viral replication, almost like a baseline or background quantity left. And without that uh, rinsing product, virus was actually replicating fast in other cells. So the product C had a significant effect. Similarly, if you see here, this is product E and this is product F. So product E also had a significant result and product F had a significant result as well. Now, what are these products? So if I go to their site or their study, they have actually listed out these products here. So Cavex oral pre-rinse, chlorohexamide, and so on. So C is Dequinil, E is isoberidine, and F is Listerine. All of these three performed significantly to reduce the virus numbers in the simulated oral and nasal cavity. Then what they did was they have also uh, discussed what are the active ingredients in them. So for example, Cavex oral pre-rinse, hydrogen peroxide, and so on. You can actually read them. Once again, isoberidine is poly uh, Vidon iodine. So iodine keeps winning here. That is a common thing in this here uh, situation. Then the next study, instead of uh, drawing that as well, because the process was almost the same, I just left it up like this. This is the other study again in vitro. This study is lowering the transmission and spread of human coronavirus. So the only thing in this study is that this is not on SARS-CoV-2. And the researchers said, we did not want to do it on SARS-CoV-2 because of two reasons. One, it is very expensive to obtain the SARS-CoV-2 samples. And secondly, to work with them, we need a BLS level three lab. So we need a more protected lab in which to work with them. And they did not have those access. So they did not want to have that access. So they have actually tested it in more harmless human coronaviruses. Now, the behavior should be the same because human coronaviruses and the SARS-CoV-2, which is also coronavirus, they all have a similar structure, and that is they have a membrane around them. And these uh, mouth washes or rinses can destroy it because they can destroy the membrane of the virus, making the virus inactive. So that is why other coronavirus, which got destroyed by these mouthwashes, should be able to, that, that uh, lesson should be portable to SARS-CoV-2 as well. So let's look at what they had done. Again, I'm not going to go in the full detail. We just saw how this is done. I'm going to just show you the, um, the products that they used. So here are the products. <clears throat> so if you see here, antiseptic CVS. So that is an American company here. So folks who are American, they know it. So if we actually, let's start from here, from the top. So the first one is Neti Pot. So this is a uh, sinus rinse by CVS and Neti Pot did nothing. Then, and look at this, what is the part of the Neti Pot? What are the components in it? Sodium bicarbonate and sodium chloride. So those folks who are going to yell at me now that why did you not talk about salt and salt is the best thing in the world. Sodium chloride is here and it didn't do anything. And don't tell me that this is nasal and you should do the gargles. This is a simulated test as well. So this was in the lab as well. They just put that thing on the uh, virally infected cells and saw if the, the virus is reduced or not. So neti pot did not do anything. Johnson & Johnson's baby shampoo, 1%. So now let me give a clarity here. This is for nasal spray, nasal wash. You can take Johnson & Johnson's 1% baby shampoo, dilute it, and then you can do a nasal rinse with it. And that also has a possibility of uh, clearing the virus. So if you see here, active ingredient was for the nasal rinse, water, inactive was citric acid. Then if you look here, uh, and of course, you can see other things here as well, sodium and desyl and other. And similarly, they just keep going for various um, various products. So, for example, peroxide sore mouth, CVS peroxide sore mouth, it actually worked. Oragel worked at, as well. And then 
uh, Crest Pro Health worked as well. Listerine worked in all cases as well. So the basic takeaway is that Listerine probably is more readily available and should be good. And now if I go to their, their efficacy, that is very interesting to see. For the nasal rinses, neti pot did nothing. For 1% baby, baby shampoo, that had 99.9% to 99.99% viricidal effect or viricidal effect that means it killed the uh, the virus after two minutes or one minute or 30 minutes or uh, 30 seconds then if you go for oral rinses in here if you check this out peroxide sore mouth look at this 90 to 99 percent in two minutes 90 to 99.9 percent .9 in one minute and 90 to 99 percent in 30 seconds so you can very easily pick out here, I think Listerine, if you look at here, Listerine, 4 log 10, so 99.99, greater than 99.99, 2 minutes or 1 minutes or 30 seconds. So the Listerine rinses thrice a day for as many days, I would say daily, is very, very useful. Similarly, look at this one, Listerine Ultra had a similar effect. Then if you see here, CVS's antiseptic mouthwash also had a similar behavior like Listerine. Then Betadine also have the same behavior. This is the iodine, the same behavior like Listerine. So iodine, iodine or Listerine or uh, H2O2 peroxide, they are working. Although the previous study showed peroxide did not do much. But here, if you see peroxide sore mouth, 90 to 99%. So it is a little less efficacious than uh, Listerine or Betadine. So what is our takeaway from this all? The takeaway is that please, if you are on prophylaxis, do mouth washes. And if you are going, if you've gone out and you have come back and you have any doubt that you might have become exposed, it, will, it is great to do the mouthwash. It is actually a good thing. It is a good healthy habit to have. I need to do this as well. So gargles and possibly nasal rinse. 30 seconds to one minute daily, three times. Iodine is useful. Hydrogen peroxide is slightly lesser useful or more or less useful. Ethanol is also very useful. Essential oils are less useful. Listerine and iodine are very useful. I would say the best are iodine and Listerine. Iodine is, I just showed you the study, iodine is also used in human study and has proven useful. So I would put iodine at the top and then Listerine and then the rest. Netipod did not do much. 1% baby shampoo did something as well. And finally, the last thing to do, I have put this link in the, um, in the description. This is a link for how to perform a nasal rinse. So I don't want to, for their copyright, I don't want to uh, play this a lot. But what she would do is she would take this nasal rinse. Bottle and then let it go. By squeezing and letting it go, it was about half of the other. And then he did it. Tilt my head down. Say my K and squeeze my rinse bottle. Just like so I'm going to just stop it here. So that is a way to do the nasal rinse as well. The study that I showed you, this Malaysian study, in this they only had oral gargles, no nasal rinses, just the gargles. And that is like this for 30 seconds, three times a day for seven days. So that is the discussion for today. I actually really thought it is very interesting because as we're talking about prophylaxis, and as studies are coming out, we are seeing that ivermectin is very, very useful. Similarly, mouthwash is very useful. Actually, today, one of our cool beans, please pray for him. Hopefully, he will be fine. He developed symptoms like COVID-19. And I had asked him to start ivermectin and um, requested him to start doing the mouthwashes as well. So this is the discussion for today. Hopefully, you all will add this to your habits as well. I would add it to my habit as well. And we'll go from there. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share. And thank you very much for your support. Uh, thank you, Margaret McInnes. She has actually sent me some donation today as well. So thank you very much. And if you would like to donate for my work, there is a link in description that you can use to donate. 
So thank you very much. And I will see you tomorrow.